we thought it was a good time to talk with some of the artists who we have worked with. It wasn't so much the mask that really got to me, it was the eyes, because you see that prime of fear in people. We kind of question the fundamental information that are asked on the census. It was almost like a, a ritual that you get up in the morning and you get to the park by 10 o'clock, 9.30, and you don't leave until, until sunset, sundown. Some see a city. We see a 300 square mile residence, currently shared by over eight and a half million people who have made it their own. From kings and trailblazers, to explorers and visionaries. Generations of the most influential families and some of the most colorful characters. Engaging eyewitnesses, eye-opening discoveries, and even some animals. After centuries of remodeling, we can't imagine living anywhere else. It's more than a city. To us, it's home. Welcome home. We're glad you're here. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Moonlight and Movies, the Dominican Dream, presented by the Museum of the City of New York. Before we get started, I'd like to turn this over to the Babia Collective, who will be providing English and Spanish interpretation for this evening's program. They will guide us briefly on how the interpretation will work tonight. And then I'll be right back to introduce the program. Hi, everybody. Um, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Cristobal Guerra. My name is Cristobal Guerra. I am part of Babilla Collective. Tonight, I will be offering interpretation, simultaneous interpretation into Spanish with my colleague, Mayra. Esta noche vamos a proveer interpretación simultánea al español con mi colega, Mayra. On the screen that you can see some instructions that briefly tell you how to activate the interpretation feature. En la pantalla van a ver unas instrucciones que te explican cómo activar el funcionamiento de interpretación. On the bottom right of your screen, you should see an interpretation globe icon. You click on that icon and you have an option to select an English channel and a Spanish channel. En la parte baja derecha de su pantalla van a ver un icono en el que dice interpretación con un globo. Una vez le dan presión a ese icono, van a escoger el canal de inglés o español. Um, you can select the Spanish option if you need to listen to in Spanish. You can, you can just keep it off if the meeting is going to be in English, or you can select English to listen to a simultaneous interpretation into English. Usted entonces escoge el canal al que quiera escoger para escuchar la interpretación al lenguaje que ha escogido. Puede dejarlo apagado o puede apagar el audio original de la reunión. 
Right now I'm speaking in both languages as uh, folks activate the feature because my colleague Maida is simultaneously interpreting my English into Spanish in the Spanish channel. Ahora mismo estoy hablando en ambos lenguajes porque mi colega Maida está interpretando mi inglés o mi español al, al lenguaje opuesto en el otro canal. So that's basically the rules. Any, um, we ask folks to speak at a moderate pace. If you're going to switch languages, we ask that you let us know and have a brief pause. And we also have a rule of one mic at it. So one person speaks at a time so we can safely and accurately interpret what you're saying. Le pedimos que hablen moderadamente en la velocidad, que hablen una persona a la vez y que mantengan estas reglas para poder interpretarles correctamente. If you have any issues with the interpretation feature, you can message me, Cristobal, or Mayra, whoever is on mute at the time. Si tienen problemas con la interpretación, pueden enviar un mensaje a mí o a Mayra, cualquiera de los dos que esté en mute en ese momento, y le podemos ayudar. We can also help you troubleshoot if you have any issues and you can message us on the chat. Thank you very much and have a good meeting. Que tengan una buena reunión. Thanks so much, Cristobal and Mayra. And good evening, everyone. Buenas noches. I'd like to get started. Uh, my name is Fran Rosenfeld. I'm the Director of Public Programs at the Museum of the City of New York. Welcome to Moonlight and Movies, the Dominican Dream. Um, we're honored to be joined for tonight's live streamed conversation by the Director of the Dominican Dream, Jonathan Hawk, and the one and only Felipe Lopez, former NBA Hola. player and star of the film. I hope you all had a chance to watch The Dominican Dream before this conversation. Um, if you pre-registered for the film uh, via the museum's website, you still have until midnight tonight to watch it for free. Otherwise, you can watch this film on your own time on ESPN+. Tonight's program is the third event in our summer film series, Moonlight and Movies, which is made possible by Sofia and Peter Volandes. We truly appreciate the Volandes' continued support, even as we've had to make the move from showing movies on our beautiful back terrace to online. The film series this summer is inspired by the museum's current exhibition, City Game, Basketball in New York which explores New York City's unique relationship with basketball. I am very excited to announce that the museum will be opening its doors back open again to the public tomorrow, August 27th. And so I invite you to register for a timed ticket. You can visit mcny.org and come check out the City Game exhibition yourself in person in the coming months. Admission is free until September 14th. I also want to invite you to come back virtually. Next month, our last film in the series will be Love and Basketball from the year 2000. And we will have a live Q&A with the film's director, Gina prince Bythewood, and others, including WNBA former player, Shamiqua Holdsclaw. And before I introduce Felipe Lopez and Jonathan Hawk, uh, I just want you to note, we will be taking your questions throughout the program via the Zoom question function. So please submit your questions there in English or Spanish. Please note, we are not using the hand raising function. So please don't bother raising your hand during the program. We just are gonna take questions via the chat. And now let me introduce Jonathan and Felipe. Jonathan Hawk is an 11 time Emmy award winning documentary filmmaker. He has directed seven films for ESPN's Emmy and Peabody award winning 30 for 30 series. And his films have premiered multiple times at the Tribeca Film Festival in New York. Felipe Lopez, former NBA player and representative of the Latino arm of the NBA, was one of the most highly touted recruits in US high school history. And he has received many distinctions during his career. 
Now Lopez runs a nonprofit organization for youth in the Dominican Republic. And now I'm pleased to pass the ball over to Jonathan and Felipe. Thank you, Fran. Uh, it's so great to be with you and your amazing museum tonight. And uh, for me, equally, if not more amazing to be with Felipe Lopez. Felipe, it's so great to see you and see you at your beautiful home in Santiago, where we filmed on multiple nights and, uh, uh, and we filmed the beautiful sunset just like you're experiencing right now. So it's just yeah. making me so happy to see you there. Thank you, John. It's great to see you again. Obviously, uh, with these times, we have not been able to uh, travel or see each other much, but I'm really happy to uh, have the experience and obviously thank you to the museum for allowing us to have this conversation and talk about the film. Thanks, Felipe. So I want to start just by acknowledging what's happening in the NBA tonight. I'm sure we have a lot of basketball fans and a lot of concerned Americans and uh, Dominican Americans and maybe some people around the world, but the, the uh, police violence uh, against Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, and then the citizen violence uh, after that um, has resulted in the NBA um, canceling all its games tonight. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks boycotted their uh, game against the Orlando Magic, the playoff game, and um, they decided to then cancel all the games uh, that were going on tonight. And so that's a breaking story. I don't know much more than that. I just saw it before we came on, but it's um, really important. And I think the idea that sports are such an important part of society uh, that you can't really separate the two. It's not uh, that sports are the fun and games over here and the rest, the real world is over here. It's all part of the real world and society gets a lot from sports that's really important and central to its meaning. And the meaning that we get out of sports is so important. So uh, that leads me to my first question for you, which is, tell me what you're doing now uh, in Santiago. Uh, well, so uh, ever since the film, I have been getting a lot of attention, which you have been everything but positive. And I, I know what the film was able to do for myself uh, because I, I believe uh, a lot of people were able to really understand what was my story about. They only they only knew that I played in the NBA and after that they just have no idea how much much of it actually happened. So what the film was able to do was just, just really was, was fill the holes on a lot of missing information that you know, uh, people didn't understand, especially here in Dominican Republic. But from going to your question, I, I, I was able to come to the Dominican Republic and, and go back to to the club that I actually grew up, uh, the club that first saw me as a, as a child uh, and become the president of the club because of my influence or, or because I, I knew that I had the ability to, uh, to in a sense, um, help rebuild the programs. Uh, that I, I didn't see were working. And, um, you know, through the whole process, three years in a row, you know, we have been very successful uh, from the, uh, the younger league to the female uh, athletes that we have. We, we are able to rebuild programs like chess club, judo, karate, taekwondo, arts, um, dance. And this, this were activities that, uh, we are missing. And I only remember, you know, growing up in the yard, having some of this activity and giving people an opportunity to participate on something. Um, I, I always felt that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or not, people just want to be involved. And when they become involved and, and, and you can uh, motivate them to, to, to be part of something, you know, the self-esteem grows. And, and for me, that was really important to, to make sure that I was able to accomplish that. Uh, so that allowed me to, to be here for three years. And from there, I, I've been able to uh, uh, being offered an opportunity to work for the Ministry of Sports, 
which now he actually extends my responsibility within the Dominican uh, Republic uh, sports uh, complex system to, to try to just help rebuild a lot of the things that actually were missing in the country. That's amazing. I wonder, Felipe, congratulations on uh, the position. Um, had you not had you not gone to college for four years, had you not had that experience at St. John's, do you think you'd be in the position today if you had left after one year? I think the film would have, would have a different story, um, which I have seen stories that have gone south uh, because people only have relied on basketball heavily to become successful. And I can only thank my mom because my mom at an early age, being a teacher for 25 years, uh, implemented a, a very strong core as far as education. Uh, not just myself, I'm not the only uh, person that went to college. My, my sister graduated from Lehman College. My brother graduated from Hosu Community College. My oldest brother, Anderson, uh, is an accountant. So, you know, j just, just knowing that basketball was not the only thing, I was, I was, I, I'm sure that in the film, some people was able to see that I, I missed a couple of events because I was not able to do the things that I was supposed to do at the house. And that's part of the educational process that I ended up learning uh, in a household that, that took uh, education as a priority. We're gonna open it up for questions from uh, the, uh, the audience in, in about five minutes. Um, but first I want to talk uh, and, and let people know a little bit about why this film happened. Uh, the first reason is a gentleman named Alex Evans, uh, an yep. amazing uh, friend, amazing human being, and a, a great producer who worked with me for a long time. Before he worked with me, he worked with you uh, at, at, yeah. at St. John's. It was a great help. It was a great help at St. John's. Uh, he was a, a, a mentor, a guiding. So one that I, you know, because I was still fresh when I when I went to college, and um, to have someone like Alex that had the understanding to truly help, you know, someone just to blossom and, and to become be on their own, uh, I needed someone like that. And, and it, it was not basketball; it was just more, you know, prepping myself up as a as a human, as a student, as a, you know, as a young man that that needed to get, you know, a lot of responsibility. Um, he was able to allow me to to do that, and he did it in a very easy way, which is only the only way that he can actually motivate people. Just being laid back and uh, and chill, and and I was able to learn a lot. Uh, so Alex, I definitely appreciate it. Alex was an assistant coach and director of basketball operations at St. John's for many years when you were there, and he had been uh, wanting me and pushing me to do this project for so long. And uh, when the time, uh, you know, we were busy and we're doing things. And, and, and then, then one day we were talking and said, wait a minute, this isn't a basketball story. This is a New York story. This is an immigrant story. Yeah. And once Alex and I had that conversation, there was no question that, that we wanted to do it. And I wanted to share with the audience a little bit about the origins of how that came to be. Um, Lily, could you, you show the first picture, please? Um, we've got a couple of pictures, one of which was was directly responsible for this film getting made. And I, and I actually appreciated, uh, John, the fact that when we actually met at the restaurant, uh, the clip that you showed me about how the film was gonna be made, he talked about Im immigrants, he talked about family, uh, he talked about, you know, the roots of a lot of many of us that be, have been successful in the United States. We have not been able to do it on our own. We always have, you know, a father or a mother or, or, or a cousin or a grandfather that actually was able to, you know, travel to, to the United States uh, and made it possible for many of us to become who we are. So when, when you showed me the clip, I, I really fell in love of it because it was nothing to do with sports, uh, even though the, the film, you know, is based on basketball, but it really touch and reach out into so many other elements that just regular folk can actually, regular immigrants can actually relate to. So this, this picture here 
is um, the little girl sitting on her mom's lap is my mom sitting on my grandma's lap and my grandfather's back there and my mother's three siblings. Um, my grandparents came over from Ukraine, Poland sort of border area uh, and settled in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, they gave me half of, of what I became and the other half came courtesy of, if we flip to the next picture, please, Lily. Uh, this gentleman um, is named Alexander Solomon. His name was Nahumovich before uh, they turned it into Solomon at uh, Ellis Island. It's my great grandfather. And uh, the video Felipe was talking about is uh, a, a Swedish filmmaker was taking uh, film of New York City in 1911 just different things he saw around the city. And um, he saw and, and had took films of this uh, newspaper seller, didn't have even a newsstand, just a pile of papers and one leg and a crutch. And, um, and that, uh, the, this man took the video of it and, um, uh, and it, uh, that was my great grandfather. And he came over with my grandmother on the boat, um, my great grandmother and my grandmother who was a baby uh, from Lithuania. And, um, uh, and they settled in the South Bronx, right around the corner from where Felipe and his family settled when, uh, when they came to the US about 60 years later. So when I, uh, there was a connection for me uh, with Felipe's story that enabled me um, to identify with Felipe and his family through my family that had come before. De mi familia que había venido antes. And, um, y... oh, Cristobal, okay. I, just, I just started hearing you. I think maybe you came off mute. Thanks. Um, but uh, the, um, even though, uh, my my dunking ability is a little less than Felipe's. I, I still uh, felt that uh, there was something in the story that I can relate to. So if we can go to the next still, maybe we can hold it on that. So yeah, it doesn't look exactly like my great grandfather, but he, uh, <laughs> but uh, this this young immigrant, uh, for those of you who've seen the film, uh, you know, captured the imagination of the city and the entire country um, of basketball fans. And I think the way Felipe that you embodied just by being who you were, yeah. everything, the, the, the potential of immigrants to the United States, how you can find something better for yourself and your family and make the rest of us all richer by your presence was something that I think Americans really, well, certainly then loved and hopefully will again learn to love as a whole country. I think most of us still actually do love that about America and want to preserve that. Um, and that was really why, why we wanted to make the film to tell that, that immigrant story. Um, and so I would love it if you could tell us some stories that we couldn't get uh, into really so much in the film because we don't have imagery of it uh, but when you arrived, uh, you were already a great basketball player uh, for your age. Um, but uh, you, um, your brother Anthony, took you to the playgrounds of New York City. Could you tell yeah, us what I, that was like? So yeah, I, I, I was I was I was born with a basketball. I wanted to say uh, so. Uh, even though being a, a Dominican. Uh, and baseball being the number one sports in our country. My father actually wanted me to play baseball and I did try to play baseball, uh, uh, my, my father's will. And um, I, it pretty much it ended up quick. I, I ended up, you know, being hit with the baseball twice on my nose. Uh, I called my father and I told him that the sports or baseball was too violent for me. <laughs> so. He ended up just giving up because he knew that I didn't have the passion for baseball uh, and I was just only getting hurt. So, you know, dedicated myself to playing 
basketball, uh, being the youngest of two brothers and one sister. They all play basketball. They're all super athletic. Uh, always follow them around, just always rebound the basketball for them. Um, and I actually, I, I, I ended up building my own basketball hoops, which it was uh, uh, a basketball that I could carry with me and, and place it in any kind of light pose, tied it up, and we always had a five on five. Um, so it, it was something that I enjoyed it. it. It was it was school and basketball. So, you know, I represented it, uh, Santiago, uh, in, a, in a special team. We actually did a, a selection or, 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 you know, some pretty talented uh, players. And I was part of that. I was part of a, a top 12 uh, uh, Santiago players, uh, which allowed me to go and compete against another uh, uh, great Dominicans in, in, uh, in other tournaments outside from the city. So I was experienced. I was, gain, I was gaining experience through playing some good competition. So when I traveled to, to New York, it was not because of basketball. It was just a uh, Dominican family looking for a better life um, and to improve. And uh, so I, we, we got to the Bronx and I pretty much was uh, shocked by the whole experience, the whole American system and the buildings and the way the lifestyle and, you know, just a progressive city, you know, something that we, I was not used to. Um, so my first couple of weeks, I was just, you know, locked up in the apartment and, you know, until my brother decided to start taking me out. Um, after work, he would work and then he would come in the afternoon and he would take me to, to the playgrounds. And one of the first playgrounds that I, we started playing, it was the, the, the backyard of the junior high school that I ended up going to that same year. Uh, so we started small with the, with the, with the backyard of the, of the school. Then he started moving up. He started taking me to San Anne's Park, St. Mary's Park, uh, which was not far from me. Uh, and you know, it was just something that I, I, I felt, I fell in love the, the way, the way they play basketball in the state was way different or how you play in our countries. Uh, you know, when you explain it, like out here, we play a lot of zone, but in the state, everything has to be one-on-one. -on -one, so you had to build an ability to, you know, to dribble the basketball. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it. That it was, it was, it was something that, um, I didn't have. And I built on it. I worked hard, um, and it, it gave me the opportunity to eventually ended up uh, having a tryout at Gauchos, uh, which is uh, an AAU team. One of the it was one of the elite basketball team in the city of New York at the time, uh, with former NBA's already playing there: Jamal Mashburn, uh, Rob Strickland, uh, Chris Mulling. Um, they had so many great athletes in. You know, so so you have people to look up to as far as like you know what where you wanted to end up with, and uh, that was a great opportunity uh, to to play for Gauchos because that's when everything just just blew up as far as playing in all the playgrounds on New York City. You know, I'm talking about Dykeman, I'm talking about 155th, I'm talking about LaGuardia House, I'm talking about uh, Minisink, I'm talking about Citywide, uh, Portchester. Uh, travel outside the New York City area, you know, Las Vegas. We actually ended up going to France, uh, Hawaii. And that was just, you know, just building up into my own career. So what was the reaction like? How, how did the kids in the playground welcome you or not welcome you when you first started showing up? Well, it, it, was, it was funny because I wasn't able to speak the language, so I was really shy. And I was felt that I was getting cheated uh, with the score because I couldn't count. So it almost seemed like I was just scoring a lot of points, but I was always down, you know? And it almost seemed like I never won again. The they always won the game. I could have called foul. It was like, it was like terrible at the beginning. So that gave me the courage to learn how to count a lot quicker. Because I needed to know how to count in order for me to keep up with my score and to keep up with other people not cheating me. And so that was the first experience as far as far as 
as learning the language, learning how to count. So that gave me a little bit uh, of more, it gave me a little bit of confidence. Oh man, I know how to count. Now I can call foul. Now I can call travel. You know, so that was like my first kind of uh, introduction into communicating with, with Americans. Uh, it, it was the, the basketball court. Uh, and it really, it, it truly helped me. It helped me a lot because it boosts my confidence, not just in the basketball court, because I was, I was, when, when I got there, I was six feet. I was six feet tall in the summer of 90 to 90, 90 to 91, I grew three and a half inches. So I went from six feet to like six, three and a half really quick. And I found myself dunking before for the eighth grade. And did, did the other kids, how did they handle an immigrant kid busting them, busting their ass on the, on the, on the well, floor? Well, you know, if you pretty good and you go to play five on five at the playground, as soon as you walk in, it doesn't matter what language you speak. You know, they, they, they keep an eye on you. They want to make sure that you, you play with them because you don't want to lose. You don't want to be, you know, having to, you know, be out and having to wait for the next game. So I was I was taken in pretty well by all the uh, bowlers, especially in the bronze, uh, which is, it, it was tough. Uh, but, you know, just the fact that I kept myself quiet, kept myself low key and, you know, just, just knew how to play and knew how to score. Like I found myself like within a community of, of, of basketball players that like, they, they kind of protected me after a while. I felt like every time I went to the basketball court, they knew that I was not a guy that was going to be in trouble or I was going to be fighting anybody. You know, so they almost like protected me in a sense and they wanted me to play on their team. So I felt comfortable. You know, I really felt comfortable when, when I went to the playgrounds. Uh, do you remember meeting franchise John Strickland, New York City legend? Oh, man. So... You know, through Gauchos, I got the opportunity to play in 155th uh, with the Mob Squad. Um, and, you know, when, when you talk about John Strickland, you talk about one of the greatest legends in playground, in playground history, uh, not just in, in, in New York, but you, you talk about all across where he played. He made sure that people knew and understood who he was. And, you know, I, I, I got the opportunity not just to meet him as a ball player, but also as a person. We played together in a few basketball teams. He traveled to the Dominican Republic and he played out here. And the guy was just, he was just a genuine, just human being. Like he was just, uh, you know, different, you know, different. His persona, like he spoke to guys, you know, uh, like a mentor. He was a mentor to a lot of guys because he knew how to be in the street. He knew how to play the game, but he also knew how to speak to people and get the best out of them. And, you know, I, I have so much respect and the utmost respect uh, for John, and, you know, you know, I know that God is taking care of him and the basketball team out there having. I'm pretty sure he's a captain, uh, and he's getting his buckets too. So yeah, rest yeah. in peace, John Strickland, who finished your breakfast. Di <laughs> died very, very young, um, sadly, but uh, a real New York hero uh, on on the streets. So we can start taking uh, individual questions. Um, Oh, you know what we wanted to do first? Um, thanks for reminding me, Fran. We wanted to uh, go through the pictures. So Lily, if you could cycle through the photographs, um, uh, a lot of screen grabs from the film, it'll help uh, people maybe jog your memory and things you want to ask Felipe about. That's the moment winning the city championship. Kareem one Reed. Of greatest, one of the greatest moments that I had was, you know, to win the city uh, city, the New York City Championship, uh, because that really just put the icing on, on the cake as far as like all the publicity that I was getting uh, to to win the championship my senior year. And then we en ended up going to the state and we won the state. But for me, I uh, went the city championship and, and being raised to the top of the hoop. And someone actually, one of my fans actually threw the Dominican flag. Uh, that really... It really, it was special, you know, it was special for someone that have been in the country uh, for only uh, five years. Um, you know, for the, for the Latinos uh, that I was representing, uh, it, it really, it reached a, a, a plateau 
of feeling just proud in a city that at the time was rough as far as the imaging that we Latino was getting in, in New York, especially in the Bronx and Washington Heights. So for me, that was really uh, something that it went, it went past not just basketball, but also the image of us Latino, like doing something right and being, and being successful uh, at certain things that we are able to accomplish. Uh, we have a question um, from uh, from a, a, a very astute observation of the film world, Mr. Alex Evans. Uh, Felipe wants uh, to let you know that how much everyone we all ex uh, enjoy the experience of watching your film. But what was it like for you uh, to watch your life on the screen? Was it emotional for you? Uh, it was. Uh... And maybe Honestly, we can cycle through the pictures. Yeah, it was it was weird in a sense because I lived it, you know, I lived it, but like to go back to certain things that I sometimes I, I quite didn't remember it or it, it was just like a moment of my life. Um, you know, it, it was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because the story, the way the story was told was, was was oh, who I am, you know. I I reached the top. I've been at the low, but you know I, I feel like with all in all, I've been just blessed to be able to live the life that can inspire people, um, that have brought a lot of pride and enjoy to my family, to my community, and to a lot of Latino peers who have seen my struggle. And, but they knew that I did it with the blue collar kind of work that I always push myself uh, to not just be regular, but to beyond that, you know, and, and, and I, I felt that uh, looking from the outside, uh, I felt like, man, that, that's pretty cool. Like, you know, I, 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 like I say, like, John, you, you've done such a fantastic job with the film because it, it didn't demonstrate just basketball. It went way beyond that. And, and, and to me, that was the most important part that I was able to take away from the film. Well, Felipe, your humanity is so tremendous that it was very easy to, to allow that to come onto the screen. You made it very easy for us. You're really incredible. Um, I have a question from Nate. Uh, what was the transition like for you when you stopped playing basketball internationally to work for NBA Cares? It was, uh, so, so, uh, so when I got hurt my, my fifth year in the league, coming into, I was coming into myself. I was coming into the Felipe Lopez that I knew, I knew that was lost for, you know, three and a half years in the NBA. So I was coming into, uh, I was coming into my own and, you know, I get hurt. So initially, uh, my mind just, just went like, man, like, you know, my whole world have ended. This, this is what I've been doing my whole time. And this is the opportunity that I've been looking for to be successful at that highest level. Because I had a so-so career. Uh, I mean, I was not, I was not a, a bench woman or anything like that. But, you know, from, from a scoring point, I, I knew that I was able to do more. I just didn't see myself with the enough opportunity. But, you know, going into uh, retiring and, and going to work for the NBA, it was very easy because I was done that. I was being part of the community. I was being involved. I always looked to see how I can help some other people, especially the youth. Uh, because I saw myself. I saw myself and I picture myself as a young guy saying like, how can this young man can continue to be inspired? How can he continue to feel like, man, I can definitely make it because such and such, you know, told me so, or such and such gave me the inspiration for me to become greater, to become better than I. Uh, so like I said, it, it was something that I, to this day I enjoy because I'm still part of the NBA kids and everything that we do off the court that a lot of people don't get to see it. Uh, 
I get to see it and I get to enjoy it because it goes beyond the game. It goes beyond, you know, dribbling the basketball. It goes into building bridges uh, between community and, 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 and especially now police and everything that everything that we've seen happening right now in the United States is what the NBA is trying to fix through the game of basketball. Question from Sterling. For most of your time, your basketball career in New York, you attended Catholic schools, Rice High School and St. John's University. Um, how do you think that experience shaped your journey? Um, honestly, it, 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 it shaped me to be uh, see myself different as far as um, become a better human, a better person. And it shaped me as far as like, okay, I play basketball, but you know, I, I need to learn how to be progressive and I need to learn how to uh, behave in certain situations. You know, um, especially when I went to Rice High School. I, I went to Rice High School and we had to wear shoes, no sneakers, doesn't matter what color. We had to wear slacks a dress shirt and a tie. And for someone that was just used to just wearing shorts 365 <laughs> days out of the year, to wear a slack and dress shirt and a tie that I, I, did, I didn't even know how to tie, it, it, was, uh, it was painful. But <laughs> what I was able to learn was that once I stepped outside the building, people started looking at me a lot different. You know, they, they didn't see me as a threat. They didn't see me as violence or something like that. You know, the stereotype, they, they, they gave me, they came to me with a lot more respect. And I really, I enjoyed it that to a point where I, I, I would come out, out, out of my house, dressed up with my shoe and my tie and everything. And, you know, come back to the house the same way because prior to that, I will, I will have a sneakers on my, on my backpack I would, I would not wear my tie into before I got to school. So, you know, it was just kind of that. And spiritually, uh, it's something that my household, my mother being a Christian since I was born, you know, we do a lot of prayer. And that's the reason why, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to God for, for all the opportunities that he has been able to bring in my life. We have a question in Spanish that I will read. You'll pardon my accent and please answer in Spanish. And uh, um, the translators will translate it to English for the English speakers. It's from Otniel. ¿Cómo te siente que el museo tome tu historia? Espera que el este cambio en la en República Dominicana te tome en cuenta para los deportes. Otiel, Otiel. 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 I wonder if Otiel is uh, he goes by la máquina. There's a friend of mine named Otiel. <laughs> Eh, primeramente me, me siento honrado de que el Museo eh, de la Ciudad de Nueva York me haya tomado eh, este documental, lo haya tomado eh, en cuenta para, para rendírselo a una comunidad no solamente hispana, pero también americana, eh, porque eso a nosotros nos sigue dando paso a, a un progreso de latinos que vamos a los Estados Unidos como inmigrantes y estamos formando parte de, de, de una iniciativa diferente, eh, positiva, eh, que nos ayuda no solamente a, a romper paredes, a romper eh, eh, todas las cosas que a veces nos quieren tirar. Eh, y la gente a veces no, no entiende que, que esto, esto es a nivel de imagen, esto es a nivel de cómo nosotros debemos de seguir eh, progresando eh, mediante la educación mediante lo, los puestos que, que antes no, no eran posibles para muchos latinos, ah, en el día de hoy eh, lo estamos logrando. Eh, tenemos senador, eh, España, tenemos, eh, tenemos eh, día a día estamos, estamos entrando a lugares que antes no lo teníamos y de que nos tomen en cuenta, de que me hayan tomado en cuenta eh, el trabajo que hizo el productor Jonathan Hack para que este film sea un producto que, que, no sola, que, que sobrepase las la, 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 la barreras, eh, es algo que a mí me motiva y, y digo que este trabajo se debe de continuar 
y le agradezco a ustedes por el apoyo que le están dando al, al documental, porque sin su apoyo tampoco esto no serviría. I have a question from our friend Kat, uh, one of the great Vancouver Grizzly fans of all time. Uh, Felipe, in the film, we touch on the fact that you got drafted by San Antonio, one of the strongest teams in the league, only to get traded to the Vancouver Grizzlies, one of the worst teams in the NBA, in NBA history, I might add, Kat, sorry, uh, just seconds later. How did you feel about landing in Vancouver? Uh, and, and thank you, Kyle, for the question. And, you know, uh, uh, also to tell, you know, our listeners to make sure they, they go and check out Finding Big Country, which is a great film as well. Uh, anyway, so just the fact that my name was called by David Stern uh, was just, I really didn't care where I ended up. I, I, I was not one of those guys that had... Uh, was picky. I was like, oh, no, nah, I wanted to, no, I just wanted to be in the NBA. And even though, you know, San Antonio did want the championship that year, and we in Vancouver ended up, you know, being, uh, you know, kind of one of the bottom team. To me, it was just the experience that I gained, uh, especially in the, in the city that really tried and, and wanted to do it right. You know, I enjoy Vancouver to this day. I have so many friends. I, I, I love the city. I think that was one of the biggest and, and greatest experience that I had uh, playing in, in, in the NBA. Uh, it helped me in a lot of way uh, because the city was just so chill and so laid back. The people are so nice. Uh, you know, but unfortunately, you know, they ended up moving it. Uh, it, it was a process, and I felt that, if that process would have continued, I think the team would have done pretty well. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, things, they happen. And, and I only hope that, you know, you know, they will be able to bring another team, another NBA team to uh, to Vancouver because the city deserves it and they to, to keep the team uh, in, uh, over there. So um, we're going to uh, wrap up in about five minutes and we got a question, a couple more questions for sure. But... Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, Felipe, is your identity as a New Yorker. And if you could talk about the idea of identity um, as a New Yorker and, and whether that depends on citizenship or residency uh, or what, what does it mean to identify as a New Yorker for you? Man, to, to be a New Yorker is just to have a mindset of just... Waking up every day and just 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 doing what's the right thing and the best thing for yourself, your family, and for your community. And you know we we are breaking down into Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx. You know, but, and we feel we feel proud of where we're from. But at the end of the day, when you bring all the stuff together, it's all about who you are and what you bring to the city. You know, and I believe the city uh, gave me a status. It gave me an opportunity to to show people who I was to become, and I did. And uh, it gave me a grind. It gave me a grind that, you know, I go to other places and, and they can tell like about something like, where you from? I'm like, I'm from New York. I'm like, yeah, you can tell that you're from New York. You, you know, it's like, I don't know, we, we walk fast or something, but <laughs> we talk crazy or what is it? Uh, and I enjoy that. Just the fact that I, that I had that, that, you know, that badge that say that you're a New Yorker, you kind of walk a little bit, you know, with, with a swag <laughs> and, you know, you become a little bit more proud of where you're from and you want to do things to represent New York because at the end of the day, it's the melting pot. It's the capital of the world. It's where everyone wants to make it. And once you make it in New York, you know you can make it anywhere. <laughs> well, you know, Felipe, whatever the city gave you, you gave us people living in New York, uh, New Yorkers all over the world, but you gave New Yorkers the image of, of the best of what we are, the best of what we think we are, what we aspire to be, what we, uh, you know, what we, what we want to be, the idea of this, this ideal of New York where, um, you know, hard work and, and being a good neighbor, even if you, even if I got a dunk on you, 
I'm going to help you up if you're in trouble, that kind of neighbor. Um, and, you know, that that's what we like to think we are. And hopefully we live up to that every day. But you, I, I, I think part of why uh, people were so captivated by you and your story was that you were showing us uh, the best of what we were trying to be as a city and, and that you came here as a 12 year old and, and, um, and saw your way to that was really, really incredible. Um, uh, so thank you so much for, for everything you did for us. Yeah, thank you. You know, I mean, New York is just a special place, man. A lot of people want to experience. I, I think that people that have done a lot of travel, if they don't get to to go to New York and see New York for what it is, they they have missed out on the whole world. And while you are in New York, make sure you go and check out the museum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you know, uh, I was at the museum. I had a I had a, a great experience. I, I was there with Karina Du Javar. I was there with Bernard King. Uh, with Smooth, uh, it just so many uh, uh, family that you know family, and and the job that they have been able to do to bring the the the, the city life, the the playground life, the basketball, uh, the things that a lot of people don't get to know, it's really important for people to see it in order for, for them to understand what New York City basketball is all about. And I wanted to thank them. I wanted to thank Fran and the whole team. For, for allowing me to, to be part of, of not just the museum, but to be part of this conversation uh, because it goes on farther than basketball for me, myself, my community, the community that I represent and the Latinos that are every day struggling to make sure that they feed their family, that they can send money back to their home. It goes way more than that. And, and I truly appreciate from the bottom of my heart for everything that you guys have done and continue to do. And I look forward to you know, continue to work with you guys in anything possible. Um, and I hope that, you know, people that are listening uh, can relay the message and, and send the link and speak to their relative and speak to their friends so they can go out and check out not just the documentary to go and register, but to go and check out the museum uh, to see all the wonderful things that, you know, they're actually doing over there. Wow. Um, I what more can I say? That was very beautiful. Thank you. That's Felipe Lopez right there. Oh my God. I'm, I'm tearing up. <laughs> Thank you, both of you. Um, what a, what a, what a beautiful conversation. Thank you everyone for sharing your questions. Thank you, Jonathan, for your brilliant film and Felipe. Thank oh you. my God. Thank you. Your Renaissance man. Um, <laughs> so muchas gracias also to the Babia Collective um, and the whole MCNY team and special shout out also honorary shout out to uh, curator of City Game Lily Tuttle um, so good night everyone thank you so much stay thanks, well thanks everybody muchas gracias <laughs>